Chair recognizes that the North County Board of Education has established a quorum and calls the August the 5th, 2024 regular monthly board meeting to order. Chair recognizes Mrs. Frances Herring. Uh, good evening. Um, let us pray. May the words spoken in this room tonight be beneficial to the students, parents, staff, and administrators in our school system. And may we be led by the guiding principle to always base our decisions on the best interests of our young people. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Mrs. Herring. Join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, members of the board, it's my honor and privilege to present to you for your consideration and hopefully your approval tonight's agenda. Thank you, Mr. Williams. Is there a recommendation or motion pertaining to the agenda? Move to approve. Motion by Mr. Smith. Second. Second by Mr. Woods. We have a motion by Mr. Smith and a second by Mr. Woods to approve the board agenda as presented. Is there any discussion? Uh, here and then, Chair will call for the vote. Wait a minute. So as you, as you um, may, may or may not be aware, Mrs. Cash uh, couldn't be with us tonight, so she is joining us via Zoom. And also, our attorney, Mr. Mitchell, uh, couldn't be with us tonight either, so he's joining us via Zoom. So Ms. Cash, can you hear me, Ms. Cash? Okay, so when I call for the vote, I'll, you, you have to, uh, since you're not present, you'll have to uh, voice it. Okay, so all in favor of the motion. Yes, sir. I also have I'm sorry? I said I also have a comment about the agenda as well. Not this particular agenda, but pertains to the agenda process. Okay. All right, so, all right, so uh, the motion pertains to this agenda. All in favor of the motion is stated, please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Mrs. Cash? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries 7-0. The agenda is set for tonight. <clears throat> Um, I'm sorry, Ms. Cash, you said you had a, a comment about the agenda? Yes, I want to make sure that the, the board as a whole received my email that uh, requesting that we revisit policy 2330 as it pertains to the agenda. Yes, ma'am, everyone, okay. everyone is acknowledged they received your email. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Perfect. All right. So, um, at this time, I don't have a few comments. And as I just you know, mentioned, Mrs. Cash uh, couldn't be with us tonight, nor Mr. Mitchell, so they're doing this Zoom. Uh, also, I'd like to recognize our elected officials. I see Mr. Preston Harrison, County Commissioner, is with us tonight. We appreciate you being with us. Thank you. Um, I don't see anybody else. Um, I do have a couple of comments I'd like to make. We'd like, we want to continue to thank all the North County Public School employees for their outstanding dedication, commitment, and hard work to ensure all of North County public school students are as successful as possible. We truly have exceptional people who work for the North County public school system. We continue to commit to provide for a safe and healthy environment for all students, employees, and our community. Short session, summer school, and summer learning opportunities have concluded. As Mrs. Herring will share tonight, both were well attended and successful. These are prime examples of the learning opportunities that Lenore County Public Schools provide for our students. The new school year is a ride around the corner and we look forward to having our students and staff back on our campuses for a new year of learning and successes. And as always, Mr. Williams will share some more good news about LCPS and the chair recognizes Mr. Williams to present the following honors and the conference. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, <clears throat> I'm happy to report to the members of the board and to the uh, public that we've had a great and very busy summer so far. Our summer school sessions have been very successful. We're wrapping up the last week of, of the last one of our summer camps uh, for kids. Our teachers have been hard at work, not only in summer instruction with summer school, but also engage in many activities to support our overall work as a school system from engaging in ongoing curriculum planning 
and instructional design efforts to a full range of workshops that teachers have been involved in. And the workshops have been not only here in Lenora County, but all over Eastern North Carolina. I attended one of those uh, events at uh, Workforce Development um, <coughs> event and a STEM event at North Carolina Aquarium at Pine Knoll Shores last week that our teachers were involved in and STEM East and STEM East Alliance were there, and East Carolina University and NC State University. It's just a, a great event and there's one in Elizabeth City and I think tonight there's one in Duplin County at, um, um, down in Wallace and there's more events around in the region so really excited about that our teachers are engaged in those activities and um, <clears throat> getting ready doing that we can to prepare for our teachers and other 10-month employees to come back on Friday August 16th and for Monday August 26th and we're all in anticipation of our um, students coming back and the 24-25 school year ending and we're really excited about that you guys are in for a treat tonight I see our students here. They're excited about sharing a little bit of what I was able to see. I, Mrs. Amy Jones, Ms. Francis Herring, Mr. Nick Harvey, and several other administrators and I, Mr. Sandman is here, and some of the other principals were there. Some central services uh, <coughs> staff members. I see Ms. Harrell back there. Just so many people uh, involved in what we were doing to collaborate with the community. We had the opportunity to just experience something totally amazing. We were at Kinston High School to see the culmination of several days of work between community entities, community partners, and our students. And that's something that we don't get a chance to see every day. And we say we have community partners, and we do. We have amazing community partners, and we always partner with many grants and full out uh, <laughs> district level grants. But we don't have a chance to partner in the way that you'll see tonight. Our kids were engaged in real world scenarios, real world activities, solving real world problems. And our community partners, and we have many, but on, for this project, I want to thank the city of Kenston, Noose Regional Library, the Down East Wood Ducks, and Lenora Community College, and their team members and their leaders for investing in our kids and pouring into our kids, sharing their expertise, mentoring our kids, coaching our kids. And I was able to see these panel discussions with our kids there, and our kids were indistinguishable from adults. And, and I joked with one of them, I said, we've been interviewing adults, adults all week for positions here in the school system, and these kids were doing as well or better than any of them, certainly better than I could do. I was so awed by what these young people were doing, and I think that you will be as well. But you'll get a chance to see a little bit of that, but to see our is functioning at such a high level of proficiency and duplicating professional workplace uh, setting scenarios and working collaboratively to solve real world problems. So this wasn't all scripted. They would say to the kids, well, I don't know, what about this? And then the kids would be deterred. They would go right into it. Well, that might be, but think about this. I just love it. I want y'all to see it. It's, I won't give away all their thunder, but it's just a, I mean, we're studying uh, entrepreneurship, and I was talking to Dr. Town, Mr. Um, Santa Man is here, uh, Dr. T's class out at Early College is really quite something to behold. The kids have started their own business there through entrepreneurship. We have that in all of our schools. It's really going great. That's one example of it, but the kids have started a business, and they keep the books, and they sort of police each other, and they tell you, you know, what they learned. They told me that balancing a checkbook is really hard and that money coming in goes out, right, young people, very quickly. And some people want to spend more than is coming in and they've learned that you have to adjust your inventory levels and you have to adjust all your variables of business. I just was <coughs> awed by what they were, they were saying. I think you'll be impressed too. So um, congratulations to Ms. Wendy Pyro and the Southwood <coughs> Elementary School team for being one of only three schools in North Carolina chosen to receive the Kids Heart Challenge Grant from the American Heart Association in the amount of $1,420. They plan to purchase, I did not know what this was. I did know when I saw a picture of it, but I didn't know before that. It's called Gaga Ball Pit. So, Mr. Wiggins, did you know? He, he, you did know? 
Okay, I'm impressed. I'm impressed. He made a face when I said, guy got ball pit. He knew it. All right, I got you. So I did not know. I confess that. But it, I did know about a ball pit, but I thought this was some special kind. And apparently it is because of the enclosure, but it's a game that the kids can play in there. And it's for our elementary school kids and $1,420. So congratulations to them. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Uh, any questions for Mr. Williams? All right, thank you, Mr. Williams, for those announcements and more examples of the amazing things that are happening on North County Public Schools. Ms. Taylor, anyone signed up for public comments? Thank you, ma'am. All right, we will now move to the presentation portion of the agenda. Chair recognizes Mr. Francis Herring to present an overview of the Lenore Public Schools Summer Learning Opportunities for 2020. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and members of the board. Tonight, I'm going to share with you the highlights from our summer learning experiences during this past July. We always served nearly 500 students between our different programming program offerings between elementary through high school. Our elementary students were treated to a pirate-themed summer learning experience for first through fourth grade. This included both our mandated Read to Achieve camp, our C or Summer Enrichment Academy. Pictured here are the staff of one of our elementary sites. And just some pirate decorations to help set the theme for the season. Our LCPS pirates are working on their writing skills here and working on STEM, science and math skills here. And not to forget reading and phonics skills. Everyone worked really hard and I think they had a really fun time. Students at all three elementary schools were part of a presentation given by the archeology span department of the Maritime Museum in Beaufort, North Carolina, where they did a presentation on Queen Anne's Revenge Shipwreck. Moving on to our programming for middle schools, there was, there really was fun had by all. Students participated in a lockbox adventure where they had to solve multiple problems and to overcome many obstacles to determine the code to the lockbox. Middle school students conducted science experiments and participated in fun and engaging STEM activities. And as seen here, students became roller coaster engineers. And they also took cooking classes, offering a wide variety of learning experiences. The traveling middle school staff did a great job and had lots of fun all over Lenore County. Last but not least, our high schools had great experiences as well. Students either participated in the Summer Enrichment Academy, or what we call C, and earned classroom credits, or they competed in the first tech challenge, expanded their fine art skills, learned all about aviation in the A or competed in the District C competition where they pitched their problem-based solutions to our participating partners, the Wood Ducks Ball Team, Kinston Public Utilities, and the Kinston Lenore County Public Library. But to begin with, during our credit recovery sessions, we had high school students that earned 388 high school credits. Our students who participated in the first Tech Robotics Challenge built and programmed robots to compete against each other. Students interested in art also had the opportunity, opportunity to express themselves in painting and sculpture classes and in the art of mural painting. The LCPS District C team ship competed in three different rounds. The purpose of District C is to teach students how to work in diverse teams to solve complex problems. We need to give them more opportunities to do just that. In teams of four, students solve meaningful and urgent problems for businesses and organizations. There are no case studies or hypotheticals. The most critical part of the experience is that it's real. Our three real problems came to us from Kinston Public Utilities, Kinston Wood Ducks, and the Public Library. One of those business uh, leaders told me that she will be implementing the suggestions they made about their app. And I thought that was amazing. Absolutely. Their solution will go into place. Yep. Here are the teams that presented to the Kinston Wood Ducks. 
this team presented to the Kenson Lenore County Public Library. And finally, this team presented to the management of Kenston Public Utilities. Other students took part in our ACE Aviation Camp, where they programmed and flew drones, visited the only Antonov 255 left on the planet, learned about jobs at Draken right here at the Global Trans Park. Still one of two oh, of the largest aircrafts in the world, it by is. the way. I'm, oh, I'm, gonna I'm an air aircraft millet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> point that out. Students pictured here were visiting the Draken base located at the Kinston Global Transpark. Students learned all about drones, how to program them, fly them, and strategize problem solving scenarios. Here we go. Since the UK Ukraine Russian conflict. There is only one Antonov 255 left on the planet. And guess where it's been this summer? You get one guess? Right here, Kitson. <laughs> and our students got to see it up close, inside and out. It's the largest aircraft in the world, featuring six turbofan engines. The aircraft is a modern engineering marvel, able to transport up to 250 tons of cargo including single people up to 200 tons over short and medium haul <clears throat> And the big fuselage sections made for Boeing by Spirit Aero Systems, it carries them in their entirety, so they don't have to be, that section doesn't have to be reassembled. They just put the sections together like interlocking Lego pieces when they get to the assembly plant, but they fly out um, in full form there. Yes, it is plane. really impressive. And the students actually got, they were able to get into the cockpit of the Antonov. Mm -hmm. on its this visit, so that was really exciting. And finally, as a concluding event for the students attending the ACE Aviation Camp, they took a field trip to NC State to visit the NC State Gaming and Esport Lab. To say they had fun, I think, would be an understatement. We had a great month, and thank you for your support. Do you have any questions? Mm -hmm. uh, any questions for Mrs. Harry? <coughs> Look like fun. It was fun. Thank you. Any comments? All right, thank you, Mrs. Harry, for that presentation. There's still more examples of the learning opportunities available for all students in the Lenore County Public Schools. Chair recognizes Mrs. Francis Harry to present an overview of the short summer school session retesting for the 2023-2024 school year. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, <coughs> members of the board. Tonight I'm gonna to share with you the results from our summer school, our short summer school session. Over a four day period uh, during the teacher work days at the end of school. So they spend three days reviewing and then the fourth day they retest. So if they didn't make a level three or higher, they have the ability to come back and take a chance to see if they can do well. And the chance is fantastic. If you look at our, this is our third grade math summer scores. Yellow is the, um, the first testing cycle. And then the blue bars are the retesting uh, that happened at school. So it shows you what a tremendous um, impact this short summer session has. So that was third grade math. Marcia blew it off the chart. They yeah. did. Marcia did great. Look at there. Yep. Summer school for fourth grade reading. There was improvements across mm -hmm. all the schools. Fourth grade math, there were improvements in every school. Fifth grade reading, improvements every in every school. You're gonna hear me say that a lot. <laughs> Fifth grade math, they had improvements in all the schools. Fifth grade science, we were just talking earlier how great our science scores are. Mr. Woods and I were talking before the, uh, before the meeting started. Our fifth and eighth grade science scores are really exceptional. We're really proud of that. Uh, sixth grade reading, you can see at all of the middle schools there was an increase in proficiency scores. In sixth grade math, there was an increase in all of our schools. Seventh grade reading had an increase in all of the schools. Seventh grade math had an increase in all of our schools. And eighth grade reading, as you can see, they had an increase in all of our schools. Eighth grade math also saw a comeback in all of our schools. And eighth grade science uh, started off strong and it ended strong. Really proud of that. 
This is biology, the biology scores at the high school level. So you can see the students came back and we had, we had extra improvement, improving scores at all of our high schools. English too is also a tested uh, subject in um, school and we had improvements in all of our high schools. This is in math one and you can see that everywhere we had, first of all, the scores are great. And second of all, we had improvements at all of the high schools um, too. NC Math 3 is also part of our calculation. You can see we either stayed right at the same place or we had improvements. So we had improvements in three out of the five. I told you I'd be quick. I promised you, Mr. Smith. Um, I'll be happy to answer any questions that you may have. Any questions for Mrs. Herring? I do have one. Yes, sir. I'm gonna give you the roses first. Okay. <laughs> There'll be something after it though. Cause I, <laughs> I read an article here lately that said, and this is flashback to the that retreat, mm -hmm. that for the third year in a row, North Carolina K-3 students have beat the national That's right. average That's right. That's right. in reading. Yes. Yes, sir. Three years in a row. And that information that you shared with us at the beach mm -hmm. showed that we are right on par with that. Yes, sir. But I do have a question. Yes, sir. The science result that you presented raised a question in my head, though. Mm -hmm. Especially when you go down to particular school sites. Mm -hmm. How is it that you can have that kind of results in science? That's what y'all were talking about. No, we were talking about And so <laughs> off. In reading the math. Right, right. So I think there's several things that have to do with that. I think one of them is the subject. I think students are really interested in science and so they're naturally more inclined to probably take the test slower, do a better job of reading the questions and taking the answers. I also think that just the very nature of the questions that how they're posed on the science exam are very different than how the questions are posed on the math and the reading tests. So I just think by its very nature, it's going to be, but it proves to me that our students can read and our students can right. are, are successful in mathematics. Or Because if they couldn't do those two things, our science scores wouldn't be as great as they are. So there has to be something to be said about the difference in the tests, yeah, I, think I believe. I think that's another element that, that you're leaving out. Oh, how teachers, smart teachers are? Teachers. <laughs> teachers are amazing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the fifth and eighth grade science teachers are outstanding, and they work so well together too. They share strategies together and resources all the time in PLCs, the PLCs. that we have at the district level. So it's a really great group. But it's a lesson that needs to be shared with the language arts and math and stuff. Absolutely, yes, sir. And I'll, also, Mrs. Harry, because I, you know, I have a science STEM in my family, and the, the, what they teach today in science. I don't think it's the same thing they taught us back when. It may be. Oh, not bit. in the not in the same manner. So. What, are you, what are you saying back in the day? Yeah, back in the day. That's right. It's the science is the same, but they do teach it differently. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. I think you're right. I don't remember you know, chicken coops. No. Or you know. <laughs> growing your own vegetables. Yeah, growing your own vegetables. Yeah. Greenhouse. Yeah. Well, that was four H. I don't remember doing that in time. <laughs> right, that was four H right. when we did it. <laughs> All right. Yes, any more you. questions, Mrs. Herring, or any more comments? Uh, thank you, Mrs. Yeah, Harry, for that presentation. Yes, yes, sir. Mr. And as evident by the results, the short summer session retest is beneficial to all our students. Chair recognizes Mrs. Amy Jones to present the Lenore County Public School District C Summer Teamship Student Showcase. Now, that's cool. And I'm going to let you introduce okay. all these outstanding students that you have here with you. Thank you. We'll make sure she gets it. You want somebody to hold it up for you, Miss Cash? Yes. Take a picture of it. We'll save it for you. Well, good evening, and thank you for having us this evening. I am so excited to share our District C experience with you. And before I get started, I would love for our students and our coach to introduce themselves, tell you their name, 
what school they're from. Okay, good evening, everybody. My name is Jada Hubbard, and I attend Kesna High School. Good evening, everyone. My name is Gerard Bracey, and I also attend Kesna High School. Hello, my name is Joel. I'm here to attend the North County Area College. How are y'all doing? My name is Boyle Wong Obadani. I attend LCC, Little Early College. Good evening. Mm -hmm. My name is Jose Garcia Lopez, and I also attend the Early College. All right. And our coach that's with us tonight. My name is Christy Burkett, and I'm a teacher at North Lamar High School. Okay. Um, so for the past three summers, students in Lenore County have had the opportunity to engage with a unique leadership and entrepreneurial experience called District C as a part of our Career Accelerator summer programming. This summer's program took place at Kinston High School and involved students from all the high schools, Kinston High School, North Lenore High School, South Lenore High School, and the Early College. To facilitate the experience, we partner with a group called District C. District C provides coaches the training that they need to facilitate the program, they provide us with a facilitator from the District C group for the summer programming, and they help us with program setup and organization. <clears throat> a key piece of the program is the business partnership. Businesses share real world business problems with teams of students who are then tasked with working together in their groups to propose solutions to the problem. At the end of the program, the students pitch their solutions to the business partners in a public forum. This summer, we were thrilled to partner with the News Regional Libraries, Kinston Public Services, and the Down East Wood Ducks. And at this time, I'm going to turn it over to our coaches and our representatives from our student teams to tell you more about the program and the positive impact it has had on our students and on our business partners. Uh, well, I'm sorry, Ms. Levin couldn't make it tonight, so I'm going to slide. Um, so the introduction that the students received, um, they were told that they were going to experience something unlike any other. They were going to work in a team, solve a real problem for a real business and organization. They said it would be fun, it would be challenging, and they'll gain experience and memories that will help you with teamwork, leadership, problem solving, getting into college, and succeeding in a job or scholarship interview. And I believe uh, Mr. Williams shared with you earlier that the students performed incredibly well um, at the pitch event that we had a couple Thursdays ago. Now I'm going to turn it over and let you all share your experience. All right. Um, good evening. Good evening. So, if I describe Mr. C in three words, I describe it as memorable, fun, and unique. Originally, I had not thought of signing up for something like this. It was through the encouragement of friends, and which really pushed me to do something like this because I'm really fond of working in teams. I'm more of an independent thinker. But throughout these two weeks that we were tasked with um, figuring out the solution to a problem that a business, that company had. And the only way one could find success in this program was through trusting your teammates and being more accepting and be willing to be open to new ideas diverse perspectives and different concepts. And also through the help of our mentors, which coached us, helped us and taught us new concepts that will carry over with us through our life and career and future career. And well, overall at District C, I think of it as a blessing. It was a wonderful experience. I got to meet new people, build new connections, and it was a way for me to learn more about myself, my interests, and how to be part of the team. It was also a wonderful way to learn more about the community and and design something that will hopefully leave an impact on the place I call home. And well, let's quickly give a quick overview of our pitch. We are, uh, my team was in charge, was working with Kinston Public Works, and the problem they faced was customer connection. We couldn't find a way to engage with the customers. So the solution that my team came up with was redesigning their customer portal page, making it more interactive for customers to uh, more, well, encourage their customers to engage with them. With the company. So, some of the things we did was add more tools such as only for them to explore consumption and usage, a way to get feedback through surveys, and a savings calculator, which can help them figure out what to save money. And all these tools was, were, set, were set with the aim to hopefully help them reach their goal of engaging with them. <laughs> Thank you. And Kinston Public Works, they were very impressed with the dashboard. I think all of us in the audience were very impressed with the dashboard and thought this would make it a lot easier to read those things. <laughs> so yeah, I bet, I bet the, uh, people in Kinston wish that was a real bill up there. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> all right. And team two. Since the beginning of my journey with District C two years ago, I've had the privilege of engaging in a multitude of enriching experiences 
characterized by in-depth research, <coughs> strong team bonds, and valuable opportunities. Collaborating with my business partners has allowed me to gain a deep understanding of their wants and needs, which we have then utilized to develop into innovative products. Being able to witness the implementation in, of our ideas within their business has been exceptionally rewarding. When it comes down to the relationships I had to follow my team up, I, up until now, I think this program has made our, strong, our bond stronger. Within two weeks, we were able to go from complete strangers to people that have overcome various obstacles, a safe and accepting environment, helping one another grow in aspects we didn't realize when we grew up, and have quality time with one another full of laughter and joy. I don't think I would ever regret being in the program due to that fact. I believe it's one thing to tell you another to actually experience how amazing this program truly is. And you can definitely tell by the things in the pictures above. As for the opportunities last summer, I had been fortunate enough to be nominated as an award and awarded as a District C Chamber of Commerce Workforce Readiness Scholar at NC State, representing Lenore County and Lenore County Early College High School. This opportunity has further enriched my experience and understanding, and I truly am grateful for the chance to contribute to and grow within this community and program. As for our pitch idea for these regional libraries, we um, we had planned to add an internship grant by utilizing their content creation STEM project and add a job or a volunteer opportunity. This would either be paid or unpaid after the internship and course is completed, while also utilizing the entrepreneurship course provided within further providing students with technology, marketing, workforce development, and data tracking backgrounds at a young age alongside whatever other possible educational backgrounds their courses would provide. Good evening. Sure. Oh, sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> this week, was one of the best opportunities I could have applied for, for the coaches, and the students, and the business partners. They all accepted us with open arms with the mindset of helping us learn. The coaches were very helpful in helping us understand that our answer may be different from the correct answer. Even when I thought we had it all. We, we knew what, what to do, a curveball had us as soon as we started to dig deeper. Looking at it from a different perspective, dig deeper and looking at it from a different perspective. The business partners were very welcome in allowing us and trusting us to help them with their problems it was fun. A great learning process. I learned that the government should pro places aren't allowed to make money. I learned that they, there are things that they can't do because they are a government entity, which made it more complicated. After all, now we had to find a way to solve the problem in mind, Just, which was that the team was grappling with how they can get more teams into the rural libraries. In the beginning, we thought social media was the main thing to help us try to figure out how to fix this. But we realized through going through the tour and the questioning that we asked them that it's not mainly social media. They really want people to attend those rural areas. And then we dug deeper and thought, Social media would only help the main brand because of the population that's up there and the, and the HQ is the only people on the Instagram. They don't have rural, rural areas of Instagram or nothing. So we dug deeper and then we found out that the library has all the things the team wants. They just don't have awareness. So we came up with the idea of student um, ambassadors. So what, the, what their role would be is they would, it's like a club at the school at schools and there would be like four or five students and then they would go to they would come up with ideas to help the, the library market they'll come up with ideas to help the library get to the students they'll have like get togethers with the students there <coughs> try to invite their friends have just spread the word um they have to come up with ideas monthly like big ideas or something like a little event for the community so where they can spread the word even go out to the places themselves and volunteer there. All this, the students mainly get volunteer hours from this, and then we, we thought of a, like a, I don't know, like a giveaway if they had one, for the person who brings in the most through a survey, they can do that. But we realized that, that that's gonna be too complicated. I don't think they can do giveaways. <laughs> so we did do that in the way, but, and then the, the ambassadors, or they just control basically the, the everything basically. So they, they tell the people, market, 
that they helped they tutored all that. That was our, our um, key, not key inside, that was our solution for that problem. And then and the executive director of the library loved that idea. She, mm -hmm. and in fact, the whole leadership team there said that I was in that session and they said that they just really loved that. Thank you. <clears throat> just see, it was a great place to start networking with people. I hadn't seen it in a long time. I didn't know. All the different people from different backgrounds communicated, working together, and had fun. Me and them was a great opportunity. Overall, <coughs> the street has been a mind blowing experience from what I learned from the Leadership and complex problem solving skills, the communication skills I gained. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. The summer team program is a very interactive program. It's designed to sharpen skill sets that everybody has. And in my experience, this program has done well more than what it's designed to do. <coughs> as well as sharpening your skills, it introduces you to new ones that you never knew you had. For example, Having more perspicacious, introspective on things. You'll walk in thinking you know everything there is whenever it comes to interpersonal relationships, cognitive thinking, and leadership. To put it bluntly, you know. <laughs> and working with diverse individuals as well as those put in your position will show you the different thinking patterns and make you more appreciative of how everyone thrives in their own consciousness, going by their own morals, and just all the different opinions and ideas that everyone has to offer. I've often found more times than not that corresponding teams can collaborate very well together, which was the case for team seven and eight. Um, we can very, sorry, we can collaborate very well together and make what I like to call an idea spaghetti, where a piece of every one idea goes into a grand solution and that solution is executed perfectly. In conclusion, this was a 10 out of 10 opportunity that I believe every student that enters high school should take at least one. Now, going into our problem. The problem with the Blue Ducks is they're leaving. <laughs> <laughs> and the fans felt unappreciated. So our goal was to put something together that would make the community members of Kensington feel appreciated. Our solution was an alternative radio as well as um, a farewell video as well as more intense marketing whenever it comes to social media. Um, I sat down, I talked with Miss Maddie, and she seemed very receptive to the ideas that me and my team had to bring. Um, the video idea was Team 8's idea, and the radio ad was our idea. We wrote the script and everything, and we decided to put it together, because at the end of the day, it's the teamship program. It's not whose idea is better than others. Let's put it together, make something fit. Now on the day that you guys were presenting, I, you, you had some ideas and part of this was scripted, but what impressed me most was the poise and the professionalism that you all displayed without exception. But what impressed me most, even more so than that, was that you guys were very sure of yourselves and, and, and solid on your feet when a question was asked that you had not anticipated or that came up spontaneously. Or they would say, well, what about this? Yes, I like that, but what about that? And you guys responded very well. I was impressed by that. And I operate in the workplace every day and have for many years, and not everybody has that skill. Those are developed. Skills. So I was sincerely impressed by you guys, truly. All right, um, I'm a representative of Team 5. Um, I'd like to say thank you all for letting me be here tonight. Um, I went into this team ship head first, and that was a really bad way of starting that way because I was working by myself. And being so headstrong, it's hard to collaborate sometimes when you're so headstrong. So I sat back and allowed more inclusivity in my group. And not only did that bring our ideas together better, but it allowed me to sharpen my skill set. Um, I learned how to work better. I learned how to work efficiently. And not only working better and efficiently, I learned how to do that with group. Um, team 5's problem, um, our team partner was um, 
the Kinston Public Services. And they were having an issue with, um, sorry y'all, they were, I'm going off the top of my head right now, but they were having an issue with um, getting feedback. And one thing I know the Native, now becoming a rising senior, um, I haven't been as um, immersed in my community as I would like to be. And now that I'm seeing that, hey, I'm about to leave, I'm about to go to college, I'm about to have a whole new life, um, I feel that I missed out on a lot. And I went into this thinking, hey, this is a way to not only get more immersed in my community, but more immersed with my peers. We came up with the idea of a Kinston Public Services Appreciation Night. And it's like a festival of sorts, it's semi-annual, so twice a year, um, we would have Kinston um, natives come together and celebrate um, the people that serve them. And not only the people that serve them, but them for um, letting Kinston Public Services serve them. So, so you can see we are so incredibly proud of our students they did an amazing job this summer and they've done an amazing job tonight and I just want to thank them so much um, we do want to thank our business partners again for the summer 2024 cycle the Kinston Public Works News Regional Library and the Down East Wood Ducks and I'd love for you to hear from uh, Ms. Burkett one of our coaches <coughs> about the growth and the opportunities she's seen the children um, experience this summer okay so um, if you came to the pitch event, you didn't see the two weeks of work that went in before that. Um, so when they first come, we intentionally put them into teams of students this time from different schools. So we, we don't want them to be in groups where they already know the people. Um, we teach them tools. So we teach them how to ask good questions, how to dig deeper to find more information, how to look through what you've been given and try to search for what is the key insight that the problem you're given might not be what the problem is, how to look for that. They, um, before the pitch event, had two interviews with their business partners, so they've already sat down with those um, team members and asked questions with them and had time to get, get more information and work together. Um, so it's a lot of work that goes into that one pitch event. They really work hard. And it's just, it's a wonderful experience to be a coach and to see the growth of these children. Um, young adults are really not children. Um, <laughs> they can hang with the adults anyway. Um, but to see them grow, especially the ones that are really <coughs> timid, and to see them come out of their shells, or like Jada said, the ones that are like, day one, I know how to fix this, I'm the leader, you know, and to see them kind of learn how to dial it down and include other people. Um, and it, I agree with Zari, it's something that every, so I am, <laughs> um, that, so, something that every high school student should experience. And I want to say that our coaches were amazing. They do a uh, very intensive training to be able to be a District C coach so that they have a blueprint and map for guiding the students through the, the process. So I just want to say again, congratulations this, to all of This project of is partially funded by a grant from the Anonymous Trust. Yes. I think at least another grant, but they're a primary funder and we're, we're looking to try to partner more with them. I talked to one of their representatives. Um, they, they're based out of Sampson County, Clinton, North Carolina, mm -hmm. and to see, but they fund all over the United States, but mostly, I mean, all over the uh, state, but mostly Eastern North Carolina, the Southeast region. So we're seeking to partner more with them, but they, they had a representative there and they love this event too. But we hope this can be the start of even more. Yeah, we'd be very grateful for that. And um, we just want to thank the school board as well for your continued support of summer programming and these work-based learning experiences for our students. If you have any questions, we'll be happy to take questions. I have two. Yes, sir. Young man at the end. I think you said something about um, job interviews. Or was that, that something I read off the board, maybe? But if you went to a job interview, what did you learn from this experience that you think would help you to go through a job interview? Outstanding, outstanding. And the next young man, would you consider coming and talking to my church about how to reach rural teens? Y'all <laughs> 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 did a great job. Thank you. Any other questions? 
any more questions for Mrs. Jones or her staff, the staff or the students? Yeah, no question. I just like to say, Ms. Jones, I think this is a great program. Mm -hmm. um, chance to uh, watch it the first year and to sit in on some of the pitches and um, listen to how they problem solve. I think it's one of the best experiences that they could have um, as young adults going in with big companies and their problems and, and putting their, getting their input in on how to, um, to solve them. I think that's I want to commend all of you all for a job well done with your projects. Thank you. If you want to watch the videos, um, the QR code will take you to a folder and it has a video, yep, has a video of all the different pitch events so you can watch the students in action. It was really fun um, to watch them do that. And what I really liked this year was that we had it at one site and so we really were able to bring together students from every school. I think you all made some really good friendships, yeah. uh, people that you had not met before. I said my the coaches said they were exchanging text and phone numbers and everything else, so um, that's a valuable part of the experience as well. Any more questions or comments? Yes, ma'am. Are all of you guys graduating this year? Yes, ma'am. Yes. 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 Going to college? Yes. 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 But we had some ninth graders in there as well. Like we had students from every grade level at high school, but it is a high school program. Okay, well, thank you. That's did an so amazing much. job. Let's give them a round of applause. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, staff, and especially thank you, students. Mr. Williams hit the nail on the head when he said, Y'all are amazing. Amazing. Told you so. Thank you. I'm very proud of you guys. The okay, chair recognizes Mrs. Pam Heath and Mrs. Lynn Marsh to present a summary of the beginning teacher orientation for the 2024-2025 school year. Mrs. Heath, Mrs. Marsh. <laughs> Well, now that would certainly be a hard act to follow. Yeah. <laughs> but we will try. Thank you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman and board members. It is certainly our pleasure to present to you this evening just a, a um, short little review of what our new teachers will be experiencing next week when they come back for new teacher orientation. We will host our new teacher orientation next week, August 12th through the 15th, Monday through Thursday, for teachers beginning their teaching career with Lenore County Public Schools. This orientation has previously been three years, but we've extended it to three days. We've extended it to four days this year to allow our ECU new teacher support program partnership to allow them to present an entire day. They normally just do a two hour session. They'll do a full day this year. And we're really excited about that change. Orientation will be held right here in the Lenore County Board of Education boardroom. The first day will begin with greetings from our executive leadership team, our three superintendents, our finance director and myself, and our beginning teacher support team, which consists of Ms. Morris, Ms. Sutton, Jennifer Sutton, who's in the back, and also our ECBT support specialist, Ms. Stephanie Radford. Following greetings from the beginning teacher support team, together with human resources, licensure, finance, <clears throat> and the employee benefits departments, they will all explain their roles, policies, and how they can support LCPS. On day two, Erin Green, Lenore County's 24-25 Teacher of the Year, will greet the beginning teachers. They will engage in professional development sessions focused on establishing a positive classroom climate and culture led by the North Carolina New Teacher Support Program coaches in our continued collaboration with East Carolina University. And we're very grateful for your support that um, you continue to help us provide each year for that. All beginning teachers will attend additional professional development sessions throughout the year with the coaches from ECU. They will provide one-on-one -on -one support to selected teachers at 10 schools throughout the academic year. Those 10 schools are CSS, Frank, Kenston High, LaGrange, North Lenore, Northwest, Rochelle, 
Southeast, South Lenore, and Southwood. And those schools were selected because they had larger concentrations of beginning teachers. I'll now turn it over to Ms. Morris. Good evening. So day three, we will begin with the greetings from Lenore County Principal of the Year, Dr. Michael Moon. Following his greetings, our elementary and high school directors will lead professional development and concurrently, Ms and the Exceptional Children's Programs team will conduct a deep dive into the EC curriculum's policies, procedures with our new EC teachers. Day three will end with a guide through the MTSS process presented by Sarah Stocks, our MTSS and 504 coordinator. So day four of our orientation, we will meet at Kinston High School in their media center and our teachers will participate in a session on digital learning led by Melissa Lynch, who is our AIG and digital learning director. And we will have a luncheon with our principals, mentors, and new teachers, and we hope to see you all there as well. And following the luncheon, our new teachers will return to their schools to spend the afternoon planning with their mentors. We are extremely excited to have at least 40 brand new teachers joining Lenore Public Schools. Ms. Sutton, Ms. Raffer, and I continue to support our new teachers through the year by offering <coughs> professional development. We also conduct observations and share our feedback with the principals. Our goal is to always support our beginning teachers and help them succeed as they begin their new careers. <coughs> we thank you so much and happy to answer any questions you may have. And Ms. Morris and Ms. Heath, we'd like to point out that a number of the new teachers that um, are, are coming back, a, no, a number of the, the uh, teachers that we've signed up to come back, some of them are BTs and some of them are not, but many of them are, are returning teachers who were here and left for whatever reason and they've decided to return and we're very happy about that. Yes. 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 Mr. Smith? Mr. Anderson, Mr. Anderson. Oh, excuse me. How do you catch your K uh, three teachers up to their letter stream? Say that one more time. How do you catch your K three new teachers up within their letter stream? Um, they will be um, during the PD sessions for um, pre service. They we will begin with our BT ones, and they will start the letters training then. Are they going to be parent of a, a veteran teacher too? Um, Elementary, they, they will be with their mentor, yes. Plus, you know, all of our new teachers that we're hiring, not just the beginning teachers, but even the veteran teachers that we're hiring, will have to, to do the letters training as well. So Unless all they of our successfully completed it in another district, but they have to complete it, and we end up doing this as well. So how many um, BTs do we have this year? Um, right now we have 110. Yes. That's counting years one, two, and three. That's yes. our total That's number. Total. Coming in this year, um, we've got close to 40. So right now we have 40 BT1s, BT32, BT3s, we have 38. And your BT1s, what subjects are they mostly hired in? Um, Is there any audit just spread out before? All the board. board. Yeah. Okay. Elementary, various subjects in middle school and in high school. It's um, CTE, just all different areas, but this focus is like mostly on the core, core areas. It's where um, the new teacher support program supplies their support. Are there any more questions for Mrs. Heath or Mrs. Marsh? Any comments? Uh, thank you, ladies. Thank you, we appreciate that presentation. Chair recognizes <coughs> Mrs. Helen Hooker to present the July 2024 financial report. Good evening. Good evening. Presented tonight is the July 2024 financial report. The report summarizes budget and year to date activity for our county board of education funds as of July 31st, 2024. Additionally, it presents the local unadjusted current expense fund balance as of the same time frame. If you have any questions and you had time to review, I'll be happy to ask them, answer them for you. Yes, Mr. Smith. Yeah, we received all of the um, insurance money for South Lenore yet? Yes. The South Lenore yeah. insurance money has come in. The insurance money? Yes, yes. it has. Yes. Are there any other questions or any comments? Mm -hmm. 
All right, thank you, Mrs. Soko. Thank you. Uh, we will now move to the action portion of the agenda. Chair recognizes Mrs. Danielle Turner to present the following child nutrition contract for the 2024-2025 school year. Good evening. Yeah, good evening. Good evening. I come, I uh, Ms. 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 Smith, uh, since, <laughs> since our last meeting, Ms. Smith <laughs> has got Okay. She's gotten married. She's now Miss Turner. Okay. I thought she said Turner. I was like, Turner. And I checked with Mrs. Turner before the meeting. I'm sure that was the proper introduction. Okay. Well, congratulations. Thank you so much. So I come before you today with a contract for $120,000. And this is our equipment, preventative maintenance, equipment repair. So that's for all 17 sites. That is a lot of equipment repair and maintenance. So, um, we did put the bid out. It was out for a week, and we did receive one response, or, well, two responses. One for, for one that we have been <coughs> working with for many years, and then another one that wanted almost more than double per visit. Uh. So, um, so I'm here today to ask for approval to move forward with a contract with Hobart Services. Are there any questions from Mrs. Turner? <laughs> I do have one question. Yes, Mrs. Cash. So I see um, on the second page, we're talking under the obligations of the school system, um, the rate. So the rate's $92 per hour and then $33 for travel. Is that typical among, I mean? Yes, ma'am. Is that normal? Because it seems like that that is a lot for them to be charging if they're, on, they're going to go ahead and charge a 92 and then the, the for, you know travel yes ma'am that is um actually that rate has not changed actually um he did not go up on the rate at all over the years okay. um and actually the other company wanted 240 dollars per visit mm -hmm. and that included the that included the truck the um labor and everything and so yes that is that i know it seems like a lot but really they're going out there they're looking at the equipment sometimes it takes an hour sometimes it takes more and then also in that hundred and twenty dollars you have a quit you have um repair uh, part cost okay. and so yeah that is a lot it's a lot but you know that's their specialty so you have to pay for that specialty and it's yes, obviously better than what it could be so yes ma'am <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mrs. Cash. Are there any more questions for Mrs. Turner? All right. Thank you, Mrs. Turner. And we do have a motion by Mr. Anderson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Wiggins. Motion by Mr. Anderson. Second by Mr. Wiggins to approve um, the child nutrition contract as presented. Is there any questions? All right, hearing none, Chair will call for the vote. All in favor of the motion is stated. Please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed? Mrs. Cash? The motion carries 7 0. Thank Mrs. you. Mrs. Turner, please notify Thank the vendor of this action. I will. Thank you. Chair recognizes Mr. Britton Williams to present the School Board's Association policies to lead the school's policy revisions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We have one policy. You have two policies total, but one policy on here is a returning policy that was on here. Uh, was on a previous board agenda about at least three months ago and we brought it back um, pulled it off for further consideration board member discussion and consideration of it and um, after those discussions uh, it was recommended um, to to put it back on so we put it back on for your consideration tonight and the other policy and I'll decrease the moment and let the attorney um, uh, break in and comment on this one and because this is not a first reading this one has gone straight to action or mi Mr. Chairman, I'll let you um, Take that because that's um, we were asked uh, by the attorney to do that <coughs> because it's time-sensitive nature to comply with law and recent legal changes, okay uh, Mr. Mitchell Can you hear us? Yes, sir. Okay, would you like to make an intro for the the new policy that's time sensitive. Sure. So, Title IX obviously legislation that's been around for decades. You know, uh, you all hear me, right? Can everybody hear? Uh, okay. Yeah. Is there any way to, to adjust the volume? Trump. Okay. 
Maybe Adam can turn up his phone. Adam, can you turn it up on your end? Adam, did you hear? Oh, there we go. That's just what it is. Not our mic. That's just what it is. Yeah. Try again, Adam. to touch it. <laughs> I might blow it up or something. I don't even know how to operate this thing. Mr. Mitchell, can you try again, please? Well, he froze. Well, like he froze up. He's fucking froze. He's gone. He lost his connection. Yeah, he just lost his connection. We lost the connection. <coughs> He's just billing us for more hours. <laughs> yeah, see if he, yeah. Can he call him? Yeah. Get him on the audio. Do you have his number? number? <laughs> well, just call him and put him on speaker phone. Are these speakers louder? Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> I was expecting to hear him over this or the tour there. Mrs. Castro with us? Just mm -hmm. complying with the law. I mean, we don't just really have a choice. It, man. Anyway, All right. That's what I was saying. So if Mr. Mitchell does come back, well, if he wants to say anything, we'll ask him. But I, I did talk to Mr. Mitchell beforehand, and so this is um, in compliance with the Title One. Title Nine. Title, uh, excuse me, Title Nine. Title Nine. Uh, I let the X out. Uh, Title <coughs> Nine. And um, as Mr. Um, Mitchell explained to me, looks like he may be coming back. Uh, this has nothing to, there were some questions. This has nothing to do with sports or bathrooms. This is in compliance with the Title IX um, sexual harassment. And also, uh, it is time sensitive, so that's why we had to wave the first ring and bring it tonight. Mr. Mitchell? Can you try now, Adam? But in order to stay in compliance with state and federal reg yeah. regulations, it right. requires boards of, board of education right. to yeah. have this policy right. on the books. Right. Yes. Starting through the. By August 1st, yes. Okay. I just move on. All right. So, can you hear us? Mr. Adam, can, Mr. Mitchell, can you hear us? Just go ahead. I think he's frozen. No. Okay. So good night. So, uh, are there any more questions for Mr. Williams, or if we get Mr. Mitchell back? Let's go. We got can, you, it. can you say one more time what Mr. Mitchell is asking for to come back to this? Okay. Why did you say, Mrs. Cash? She's asking to come back, but she's asking something. You prefaced it and said it did not pertain to certain items. Yeah. Yes, I talked with Mr. Mitchell. He said that this does not pertain to sports or bathrooms. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Yeah, let's just go ahead. Well, okay. Let's go ahead. Does anybody well, else have any more well, we'll any questions? We'll need them for closed sessions. Any so go ahead and work on that. We'll we'll any more on, questions we'll or any more comments? But in the event that this is a required, yeah. Policy to have on the books, I'm going to adopt the policy. Okay. 
All right. If there, are any, if there are any more questions, or any more comments, is there a recommendation or motion pertaining to the policy revision? You, just made it. you gave me one. I'm sorry. Motion by Mr. Anderson. Just a second. second. Second by Mr. Woods. Motion by Mr. Anderson. A second by Mr. Woods to approve the North Carolina School Board Association revision as presented. Is there any discussion? All right. Hearing none, Chair will call for the vote. All in favor of the motion is stated. Please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Mrs. Cash? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries 7 0. Mr. Williams, please incorporate these policies into the board's policies. Chair recognizes Mrs. Francis Herring to present an out of state school field trip for the Migrant Education Summer Camp. Chairman and members of the board, this is a little different. I have a request. Yeah. Um, she's the so it's a field trip to Myrtle Beach, but it is, we're asking for August 8th, but the weather is going to be really, really bad. And so I'd like to request um, the field trip, uh, but we're hoping you reschedule it for the week of August the 12th, which is next week. The emergency um, management is strongly recommended. Yeah. And I mean, we weren't, oh, yeah. weren't thinking that anyway and looking at the weather, mm -hmm. but they've strongly recommended that we schedule if possible so we asked about a week down the road and and hopefully prayerfully there won't be any damage and and everything will be fine next week so so on that contingency that's what we're asking that if if it's if we're able to do so and everything looks good to do, do so could we move that trip back a week and it's for our um it's the culminating event for our migrant camp that that we we are hosting this um this week it's this it's a week long and they're going to Ripley's Aquarium, and then they're going out to dinner, um, out to lunch at Dave and Buster's, and then they'll leave Myrtle Beach and return to LaGrange around six. So it's a, it's a day long trip, but we'd like to do it one day next week when the weather is better. Now, any questions for Mrs. Harris? Please say it's well. well. Thank you, Mrs. Harris. Is there a recommendation or motion pertaining to the out of state school trip? Move to approve Motion the Mr. Smith. Move to yeah, move to approve the contingent plan for the week of the twelfth for the migrant field trip. Okay. Is that the date that it decided? Yeah, the week of the twelfth. It'll, okay. it'll be one day next week. Uh, uh, motion by Mr. Smith. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Anderson. Have a motion by Mr. Smith and a second by Mr. Anderson to approve the out of state school trip for the migrant education summer camp students as presented. Any discussion? Not, not as presented. Excuse me. No, not as presented, was it? Well, as she presented, oh, okay. yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. One day next week. Okay. Hearing none, Chair, will call for the vote. All in favor of the motion to stated, please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Mrs. Cash? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries 7 0. <clears throat> Mrs. Harrigan, please notify the students of this action. And the sure will. Staff. They'll be very excited. Thank you. Okay. Chair recognizes Ms. Amy Jones to present the driver education contract for the 2024 2025 school year. <clears throat> Good evening again. Um, I am submitting for your approval the driver education contract for the 2024-2025 school year. This is for third-party services. Um, I do recommend that we remain with Jordan Driving School as our provider, and there are no changes in cost from the previous year's contract. All right, any questions for Mrs. Jones? All right, thank you, Mrs. Jones. Is there a recommendation or motion pertaining to the driver education contract? Oh, to approve. Motion by Mr. Smith. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Woods. Motion by Mr. Smith and a second by Mr. Woods to approve the driver's education contract for the 2024-2025 school year as presented. Any discussion? Hearing none, Chair will call for the vote. All in favor of the motion to state it, please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Mrs. Cash? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries 7-0. Mr. Jones, please notify Jordan Driving School of this action. Yes, thank you. Uh, Chair, recognize Mr. Brent Williams to present surplus items. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, tonight, in Mr. Harvey's place, I am presenting for your consideration the uh, surplus items noted there. Uh, the attached items are from South Lenore High School Health Sciences <coughs> Department. They're submitted for your approval to be deemed surplus tonight. Any proceeds derived will be returned to the respective departments. Any surplus material deemed to hold little or no value is systematically collected and distributed to an authorized electronic recycler ensuring responsible disposal and adherence to environmental regulations. And what we're dealing with here is outdated college and career promise textbooks. They've been replaced with e-editions or newer editions of the print materials. 
All right, now are there any questions for Mr. Williams? All right, thank you, Mr. Williams. Is there a recommendation or motion pertaining to surplus items? Motion by Mr. Anderson. Second by Mr. Wiggins. Motion by Mr. Anderson is second by Mr. Wiggins to approve the surplus items as presented. Any discussion? Hearing none, Chair will call for the vote. All in favor of the motion as stated, please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed. Lock sign, Mrs. Cash? Yes. Motion carries 7 of Mr. Williams, please notify the schools of this action. Is there a recommendation or motion pertaining to closed session? Mr. Chair. Yes, Mr. Anderson. Mr. Chairman, I move that the Lenore County Board of Education enter into closed session on North Carolina General Statute 143-318.11. The disclosure of confidential personnel files with the board's attorney in order to preserve the attorney-client privilege and to consider matters relating to the initial employment of an individual employee. Motion by Mr. Anderson. Second. Second by Mr. Smith. Motion by Mr. Anderson is second by Mr. Smith to move the closed session. Any discussion? Hearing none, Chair will call for the vote. All in favor of the motion is stated. Please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like to sign. Mrs. Cash? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries 7 0. We are now in closed session. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Chair recognizes the Laurel County Board of Education is back in open session. Is there a motion or um, a recommendation or motion pertaining to personnel recommendations? Move to approve the personnel report with the agenda. Motion by Mr. Anderson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Smith. Motion by Mr. Anderson. Second by Mr. Smith to approve the monthly personnel recommendation with the addendum. Is there any discussion? Uh, here none, Chair will call for the vote. All in favor of the motion <coughs> as stated, please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Mrs. Cash? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Mrs. Heath, please notify the employees of this action. You will make the announcement. Mm -hmm. All right. With no further business to yeah, come. We'll talk about I'm sorry? The board thinks she has a policy that she asked about. Yes. Yes. So, Mrs. Cash, what we'll do, we will convene the policy committee and, and, and uh, let them study that. Okay. Who is on that policy committee? I believe that it is Mr. Smith, Dr. Outlaw, and yourself. Okay, that's what I thought. Just want to make sure. I believe that's the case. So we will, you know, find a time where we can um, convene the, the the committee, and we'll start from there. Perfect. Sounds great. Thank All you. All right. Thank you. With no further business. All right. Now, with no further business to come before this board, is there a recommendation or motion pertaining to adjournment? So moved. Motion by Mr. Anderson. There's a second. Second by Mr. Smith. Motion by Mr. Anderson. Second by Mr. Smith to adjourn the August 5th, 2024 regular monthly meeting. Any discussion? Here and then, Chair will call for the vote. All in favor of the motion is stated. Please signify by raising your right hand. All opposed, like sign. Mrs. Cash? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. We are now adjourned. Everyone, please stay safe. Good night, lawyer.